I was saying, I guess my perspective is like, I understand. I think Drake is going to get scrutinized by the fans, rightfully so, because optically, publicly, this looks awful. I get that. But from the business perspective, from the business side, I think what he's doing, obviously for himself, but what he's also doing on behalf of other artists, this is a really big deal for what this could become. Because as someone that worked at a major for like three years doing what Drake is accusing Kendrick of doing, which is common practice, which has been done on behalf of Drake, Drake's not exclusive to this. Drake got to where he is, obviously because he's an amazing artist, but also because the powers that be saw the artist and the potential that Drake could become and put him in positions and gave him the green light and the blessings of the DSPs, the Spotify's, the manipulation, all the shit he's accusing Kendrick of and putting it on a pedestal. The only really big red flag that I see that differentiates what has been done for Drake as well as Kendrick and other big artists alike, this isn't just exclusive to them, is that like low-key cutting the dollar and giving Spotify a 30% cut. Like, hey, yo, we'll shave some off this if you guys boost it on this end. That's crazy. So that was the everything thing. else in the lawsuit, yeah. everything else in the lawsuit I'm seeing we do that. Labels do that. Nothing is beyond, like, those are just parts of promoting an artist and promoting a record. What about the podcast portion of it, the NFR podcast? Because you're in podcasting, they called out how NFR received some type of under-the-table deal. That happens. Yeah, but it's not standardized, and it's always like, it happens, but until yeah, but somebody calls industry. it out. That's it. That's the, that's the industry. Payola happens. People get paid. Like, I, at a label, I had, when I was working certain artist accounts, I'd pay ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 a month on just an Instagram, like, that at rap pages, at bars. At That's brand this, marketing, that. though. It's all brand, academics page, all these pages are paid posts. No one gives a fuck about that. No one cares about that. Okay. Everything is paid. YouTube reactions, for more often than not, are paid posts. I used to pay thousands of dollars a week for YouTube reactions. All that shit is paid. That's not the game. The game is when you manipulate the dollar and, and do this whole thing on the Spotify end and give, like, you know, because they're all in bed together, the labels well, and the DSPs. I would assume that at some point crazy. when the mob was paying radio stations to play music, it was not, it was okay, but at some point it wasn't. So I'm just saying, like, is this the role to it no longer being okay? Well, so this is why I think with Drake, this lawsuit's interesting because, like I said, like, Drake's, it's it's kind of, you know, in, in part, the, the pot calling the kettle black, because theoretically, you've also been, like I said, the beneficiary of the very things you're accusing Kendrick of. So then where does the line get drawn? And then also for Drake, like, yes, you filed the claim, but if what you're accusing Kendrick of is ha has happened and is currently happening, you're not the only artist that this affects on Spotify. Like, yes, you are the face of this lawsuit because your current very public feud beef with Kendrick and you guys are obviously the top two in hip hop. But w for what Drake is saying, this sounds more like a class action lawsuit where every artist that's a part of Spotify's community, every artist that should be getting paid for being on that service, lost potential income because of what Spotify has done on behalf of Kendrick. So now that's where this shit gets interesting to me, at least, because... Drake could just be, in a, again, publicly, fan-wise, it's going to look awful. He looks like a snitch, the pussy, all, I get all that. But what he's potentially lining up and exposing is like, okay, like, all this money shouldn't go to me. I don't think this lawsuit, Drake is pushing, I guess, upwards of a billion dollars. That billion dollars, I don't think that should go to Drake. But then how does that get distributed among artists? Every artist, all artists on Spotify. Is that a fine that Spotify pays? But like, what does that look like? Because, yes, Drake has been the face of this, but this affects everybody in the industry. Does 100 gigs make sense now? A thousand percent. Drake, that's so when we recorded, you'll hear it tomorrow. I said, I was like, we were talking about UMG and they're, they're snaking and, and doing on behalf of Kendrick. I was like, yeah, but Drake is signed to UMG. And then we had the thought, I was like, well... Obviously, things have been going the wrong way. Like, they've had beef for years. And obviously, the 100 gigs was probably the most, like, fan-facing public display of Drake's disdain towards them. Like, well, fuck you guys. Here's all this content that I've, that you should more or less be the ones putting out in control of. But I'm over this. Fuck you guys. But then there's this other thing in this article 
sorry I'm rambling because I'm like really trying to, it's all happening in my mind right now. The thing with UMG saying, bro, we're not the people, and this is where I find it interesting too. UMG's like, we're not the people you need to attack because they're trying to play the, hey, we're on your side, you're signed with us kind of thing, which is like kind of bullshit because you can play both sides. Shit, people do that. So they're like, hey, don't come after us, go after Kendrick and his estate because obviously Kendrick is the one that benefited the most and was like the sole beneficiary of what you're accusing us of, which is not true. If that's a dick move, I mean, it's a, it's a label. They're going to do what they do. But that's obviously not the move. Everything that's gained, the label gained more, probably 10x. Because obviously, not like us was the face of this movement, but the back catalog got an extreme kick and boost that no one, we don't even talk about that. Kendrick's music, old shit, Section 80, you know, good chemistry, that's going to stream more than it ever once was before. So, yeah, like, not like us was the face of a movement to just kick up all the back catalog and, and break in millions of dollars for the label. Does this, and, and, you know, does this, Kendrick. Does this put a spotlight on anybody who might be manipulating platforms moving forward? Like, is botting less likely to happen now? But this is the thing, bro. Like, that's the game. But I don't understand what people think the music industry is. A lot of it's a facade. Like, I'll be the first to say, again, I'm not in the major label system. I mean, even if I were to take another major label job, this isn't information that I'd be, like, necessarily gatekeeping. When you sign an artist, more often than not, when you're a new artist, we call them, like, our babies, so to speak. No one knows they're on the roster. We hide what's called the P line, which is, like, if when an artist drops a single or an album, the line underneath, like, the last song is, like, distributed by, you know, UMG, like, you know, OVO recordings, if you look at Drake stuff. But if an artist is hidden, like if an artist is a baby and we don't want them to be announced, you, you just, that, that line is blank. There's nothing on it, so there's no public identifier of who this artist is signed with. So then what you do is you build this fake facade that this artist is bubbling under the scenes. So then the first video they drop under a music label, all of a sudden they'll be averaging like 20,000 views on a music video. All of a sudden this next video has 2 million views. The song's not popping, but the song, the video has 2 million views optically it just looks like there's traction going but on. can i ask something like yeah of course so i mean i get paid for promotion and all that stuff even paying like youtubers and stuff to review a song i get that but is there not a line with like botting and like faking streams and sales and stuff like that i know people person i think look that's the thing i think that becomes a moral conversation because I know people personally that are in this industry that work for labels and some that do it independently that buy streams for artists with the hopes of, hey, look, we buy enough streams as artists. I know a couple people at the label. I know the A&R over at blank. Let me float their name by them. Let them see the numbers, the traction we got going on. You're doing it with the hopes of just getting, you know, that signing bag, a bag to just like, you know, rinse and repeat that model. So it is, it's a hustle. Like I, that, and then, you know, the, more often than not, those artists don't work out. But hey, if you get one that pops and you're actually legit, well, then shit, congrats. That fake hustle became a real movement, and now you have like a tangible artist. I don't, I don't agree with that. If you're asking me, like personally, I don't fuck with that. And I, but I do know people that do that and have done that. I mean, I've seen it past. too. I've seen some people that I know that they have. They just like pluck somebody out of the middle of nowhere, Atlanta, and then all of a sudden, six months later, I'm like, they on playlists and all that type of stuff, and I'm like, okay. I mean, I'm I figured that that's what was going on behind the scenes. I think I think paying for promotion is one thing, but I feel like faking numbers is kind of crossing a line, in my opinion. But I guess it's not illegal. It it may just be like an ethical thing. You yeah, that's you know. kind of where it lies too. The, the thing that, like, I find interesting is, like, people that I'm close with, like, in the scene were, like, really mad at Kendrick for what they called, like, a Twitter bot campaign. Like, buying bots, buying, like, you know, these Instagram page ads. But I'm like, I don't, I think the anger comes from because, A, you don't like Kendrick. And, and B, you're just mad at. Like, the whole thing, the funny thing, I think, behind Not Like Us in particular is, I don't think Not Like Us needed this from the label or Spotify to push it to this extent. I think Not Like Us had the organic traction, had the, like, cultural zeitgeist, 
that them flipping all these switches and pushing the buttons obviously didn't hurt, but you can't fake cultural impact. That's what I was saying in the studio after we recorded. I was like, look, I can take a song with zero plays and it'll have a hundred million tomorrow if I flip the switch. But that doesn't give a song cultural impact. There's a difference between Kendrick's song doing numbers, but then there's a huge difference when that song not only is doing numbers, but also has like HBCU bands playing that shit. Like, you know, having people on the weather channel, like saying that we got to, you know, it, the cold front coming, the wah, 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 like all those clips and things like those are like real life things. That was a cultural, these are cultural moments. That Like, I don't, I just didn't think Kendrick, I, I mean, I just don't think they needed to go to the extent of what Drake is alleging that they are to, to make that the moment that it already was, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? Like, I, I get it. It's already a burning fire. Throw a little more gas on it. But they had it already. You had him dead in the water. Uh, I had a question for Julian. Um, if Drake is able to somehow prove that UMG and Spotify conspired to up boost this song abnormally to push down yeah. his negotiation price, what would what would your opinion be on this whole beef situation and as a whole? Like, what what would your thoughts be? My initial and it would. It would proven to be guilty or proven to be true or not. I think it would start there. But purely just, again, to the point I just made, from the music and the impact that we that we all lived through over the summer, it doesn't matter at this very moment what Drake does. He lost. Like, it, that's it. I mean, it doesn't... If he, win, if he wins a billion dollars, it does, he's already a billionaire. What difference is a billion... Like, yeah, it's a lot of fuck ton of money for anybody. But... Hip hop shouldn't care about who won the lawsuit. I don't care. I think this is a good move for Drake. If he's doing this like out of, you know, on behalf of the other artists in the industry, like I'll, I'll give him that pass. I think there's a lot of good in coming with this lawsuit, potentially. But you lost the, the battle, you lost. It's a, it's a, it's a, what are you going to do? Really really change the I think if a lot of people see that this was bought up, it will give everybody the credence to justify that Drake didn't engage in that. I'm sorry, it's just going to look different. I don't, I don't know, man. I don't, I don't think, because I just don't think the impact of Not Like Us was a tr was needed, got to where it was because of a bot. Because I know that machine. I know what that looks like. You can't fake that level of impact, though. Yeah, I don't know. I you just can't. But I think, I but I would argue though that people have already been looking for a reason not to like Drake. So of course. So I think that them pushing the song in that way, I mean, yeah, it kind of did have the cultural impact, and it probably would have on its own. But I feel like that's more so just because people are looking for any reason to not like Drake. Hmm. Yeah. And I don't want to say, I got, I have a little more information that I can't, show, but like the money that was spent allegedly on behalf of, from Kendrick and their team is, it's a significant amount of money, allegedly. I don't know if that's been reported yet. I don't want to say it because I don't want to be the person to like fucking do this. So but it's like, not the it's, measly 5000 It's, oh. I mean, it's academics kind of says it's, Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a lot. It's a very significant sum of money. That would move the needle, of course. Is it the same six-figure number you heard? Higher. Much higher. Okay. Millions? Million, yeah, tens of millions. Jesus. Do you think that they're making that back? Yes. Yeah, I, 100%. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, think, I think that's a long-term investment that they were able to make. And I think you're right. Like I think you're right that this is, I think, the overarching thing of this whole movement is like, People are on that level are tired of Drake being in the position that he's in, being able to get away with certain things that he does that other artists don't. Like I just think that they were ready to put someone else. You know, people say like we don't nominate Beyonce anymore for Grammys because we're tired of her fucking winning. Like I think people just get tired of people winning. Like hey, and Drake was up. giving everyone his ass to kiss, I guess as well. And if, yeah, and he's you know he's he's rich enough to to give everyone the middle finger. Yeah, even the people that he has deals with. Julian, do you think that Drake possibly going into a renegotiation with the label might have something to do with this too? 
for sure. Yeah. I look. I think this is like so multi layered on a level that I don't. I there's stuff to this that I'm not even privy to. But I think it's all of that, and I think to like put it all in one thing is like foolish. I think like most beefs in most uh relationships that go sour there's never there might be like a straw that breaks a camel's back but usually like even if you look at it on like a friendship level with people that you know it's a cumulative thing some of those things you never even vocalized out loud some most of them they're just like a feeling but then like you just kind of keep tally over time and i think drake's at that point where he's like these people have done you know for 10 years I've been given myself, my career, my life to these people, and, and they've done this, 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 this along the way. I'm done. I can see that. And I can see them being like, well, we're tired of your ass, too. Like, fuck. <laughs> I just wonder how Drake was able to move through the industry and gain this much leverage along the way, because that's kind of an anomaly. I mean, of course, because of his music and like his talent and all that, but he has a lot of leverage that a lot of other artists don't have. I mean, I think success is just the ultimate. Yeah. yeah, like success is the ultimate uh, pass. You know? it, like you, you can get away with it. You, when, when you're bringing in billions, you can do a lot of shit. Yeah, he was making great music now. Yeah. And he was putting out fantastic music. No, I mean, yeah. I agree. Like, I think he's, <laughs> I personally think that he's the best rapper of all time. That may be debatable to everybody, but, um, yeah, I just find it crazy. Like, no, but, but, but to that, I say, like, there's a lot of, like, really great artists that they get stifled out really early on by, like, these shitty deals and stuff. So I would just be curious to know, like, the business moves that he made mm-hmm. to walk away to get to this point of success. I think with Drake, the is that. What Drake the resentment was that you thought he was gonna fall off and it never happened. <laughs> you thought like you thought it was happening like twenty eighteen, nineteen, yeah, and it never came. So the resentment grew and grew and yeah, it, it became. It's like that guy. It's like that guy that tweets that goes viral every year. That tweet he had when LeBron turned thirty. He's like, yeah. well, thank God he turned thirty. This shit ain't gonna last that much longer. And every year LeBron's numbers get better. And every year it looks like he's going to play another, you know, however many years. It's like people just, you when you see greatness, you're like, that was cool for the moment. But now it's like getting a little out of hand, man. Yeah. I think people are just, people, it's, we're all human. Like, it, this, this is human nature. We're like, dude, we saw it. You did it. Get the fuck out the way. Let someone else do it. Like, it's just, we get tired of it. Okay, but he and Kendrick and J. Cole are pretty much the same age. Like, Kendrick's not Drake's replacing him. Who's going to replace them? Who's going to replace Drake? Them. Drake's way Drake's... bigger than him. Yeah. And Kendrick's yeah, in they're... a different place in his career. Yeah. But no, I think that's But our they're point. all almost like, 40. Yeah, like, why would you... I don't think Kendrick age matters in here? music in that regard. I'm not saying... I don't think age is the barometer. I think it's just long... Like, in terms of Drake being... at the, I think... The big three thing is even crazy. I think Drake is so far ahead that that big three thing like kind of undercuts. His. Why are you saying that though? Why are you saying? Because I mean, you're someone who said Drake lost and all that, which means that you you're, can lose a beat. You can you're lose unbiased. No, I'm just saying bet. you're un, you're unbiased. Uh, that's what I'm saying. But I'm saying why are you saying Drake is like there's really not a big three? What are the metrics you're using to determine that Drake's level? When I say big three, I'm not talking rap skill. I'm shelving rap ability. Let's talk like career, success, and accomplishments. It's Drake by combined Cole and Kendrick, combined the next 10 artists. It's Drake. Mm. Like it doesn't even, you know what I mean? Like when, when we had the big three, it's like, okay, well, which, which category are we arguing? Because there's our arguments to be made for specific ones. But if you're just talking success, it's come on. Kendrick just started a label like two years ago. <laughs> Wake it up. Like, what What are we talking about? Drake's been a Raptors owner. Cole got his thing with Charlotte, which is awesome. But, like, these guys, they're playing catch-up. And also, don't forget that Kendrick didn't put out music for quite some time, almost five, six years. And then once he put out that letter and got his label shit right, now all of a sudden his career has skyrocketed. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. But I think, like, that's when I say – He's been at the top for so long. Yeah, I'm not. It's not an age thing. I, it's, I think I really just think it's 
a Drake thing. <laughs> Where people are over it. I'm not. I'm fucking Drake's great. I'm, Are I'm people loving people in the room with us? Because it's not me. Yeah, I'm just like, how could y'all be over good music? Like, well, the Matthew thing is, still putting out music. It's human nature. People, they want to build somebody up and then watch them fall. Like, they want to see the story end. That's just human nature. I don't think, think, think Kendrick's like marketability and aesthetic right now just like fits what people want. Like, coming off the heels of like, Sadly enough, D, he, and I. Well, like, coming off the heels of, like, the, the BLM stuff and, like, everyone just, like, going back to, like, natural look. And, like, all these things. Like, Kendrick just fits the mold of, like, what... Which really, you really want me to have that conversation. The trend. He fits the, he fits the mold of what white people want. Because if we can, we can keep it a buck. I, this is a conversation that I can... Fuck, I gotta write an essay on. I think the real... The, Look, the real people pulling the strings and, and making the moves here behind the scenes is never the artist. It's these old ass white people that own the fucking labels and own the media companies. So for whatever reason, Kendrick's the guy. I don't, I don't know why, but the powers be like that's they pick Kendrick. Hey man, they pick see this shit. He's the one. Happens everywhere. They pick Kendrick right after Macklemore beat him for that damn Grammy. Ever since then. Damn. So, yeah, I don't know, man. It's like I, the music's great. I'm enjoying this. The music purely as a fan, but like the politics of this is deep and, and serious. And the, what happened today, I get all the memes, all the Twitter. The Jewish kid is going to sue. Of course, he is. Like I get all that. Like ha ha ha, Twitter like jokes and shit. This is a huge deal for how this shakes up. And I'm very. This is to me far more exciting than the. Whoever drops next, Facts. I don't need uh, shelf the music. I mean, I take the music; that'd be great. But like, I'm way more interested. There's gonna the be documentaries about this shit. They will. It's this like, is a really big deal in music. Well, it's think, not. Like, oh, go ahead. I say, you know how like certain laws are named after people. Like, I think there might be like a Drake clause in contracts in the future. Um, a, a potential. I mean, we'll see what they shake up, how this shakes up. But, like when they made yeah. the Brady rule in football. Yeah, like. No, like yeah, if like he the wins this, of this. Yeah, like this will be major for the. Like this will change the whole industry if he wins this lawsuit. So this is like bigger than a beef for, like. So I'm curious to see how it play out. Even if he doesn't. Well, win, aren't like, they a saying it's not a lawsuit? It, yeah, right now it's a petition to file. So. Do you think he's gonna file? I, I don't, this is my thing. I don't think Drake would have gotten to this point if he didn't think with his team, his lawyers internally, that there was enough evidence to file and pursue legal action. I don't think he would jump out without, you know what I mean? Like, I don't think he put his cart before the horse with something of this magnitude. Also, because he's not stupid, he knows what it would look like for him to publicly say he's taking this to court. You know how that looks like in hip hop. They're making all those Jewish jokes. I bet he got some good Jewish lawyers. That's a fact. I'm That's sure. I'm big sure Kendrick does as well. Damn. I mean, yeah, going against UMG, you got to have some big names behind you and some people that know what they're talking about. Well, I don't want to keep it. I mean, I feel like we're ending on a good high note. Um... Uh, any last thoughts before we wrap up? On my end, no. Uh, tomorrow's a good episode. I don't want to like plug the pod, but like Maul, I think the 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 bitterness and anger that you guys probably felt for the most part when it came to this beef is like like it's settled. Like he's very objective about we do a Kendrick album review. I won't spoil what he thinks of it, but it's a good we do a great review. Like it's fun. Um. And then, yeah, like like I said, we, we end up punching back in and, and covering this for a little bit. Uh, but, yeah, you know, we're going to head into the to the holiday with fucking staring at my phone, wondering what's going on with this. All right. Um, thank you, everybody that joined us. It was a great space. Uh, we might be back as things develop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for real. Yeah, this feels like wartime. All right. Salute to everybody. Thank you. We'll be back. Shout out to this is the Roaring All Podcast. All right, peace. <laughs> Good night, man. Peace. <laughs>